All right, I am back, and I have set up the next game, which is Celine. For if any of you have noticed, I have her as my uh my uh cover screen, uh my uh backgrounds, uh, mostly because uh actually the opening credits is her her picture. I actually had to go around through the settings, play around with these so I can play this game because it has got nudity in it. But you guys won't be able to see none of that because I have it in streamer mode. So we're going to actually start it. It's a click and point um, kind of horror game, psychological horror game. That's weird. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it tells a story, it tells several stories. And uh, I'm going to play through it and actually probably go through and try to get all the endings. Because I have played this extensively and I have pretty much all the DLCs and stuff. Uh, or the the achievements and stuff, but uh, I want to play through it, so we're going to. Oh, oh, it probably helps if I also do this. Better, awesome. There we go. Let's try this. The sound was driving him crazy. Motinous, muffled thuds were resonating throughout his head with a with dull pain. Pain wasn't too strong, nothing unbearable, but that sound. More than anything else, he wanted the sound to just stop. Thud. Ne nevertheless, the knocking sounds didn't end. He knew it well enough because he himself was their origin. Thud. 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 The noise of his slipper was hitting the rear of his desk over and over again, like a huge fluffy moth, frantically ramming against the window glass. He wanted, actually, he wanted plenty of things. He wanted to pay the rent in time this month, not to displease his landlady again. He wanted to finish the script, at least in draft, because a draft is way better than nothing. Someone can work with. And he wanted to sleep. No, not quite that. The problem, a serious one, was that he didn't really want to sleep. He leaned back in his chair and rubbed his eyes shut, pressing his eyeballs until dancing pale lights appeared. Of course he took the sleeping pills. When a healthy eight hour sleep gives way to a not so healthy five hour nap, then a three hour shut sh eye shut break and then goes away entirely, you stop thinking about how this will impact your liver. You just want to sleep. <clears throat> you need to sleep, especially if you have already taken an advance payment for the first part of a gig and a goddamn text won't just write itself. However, if the text could in fact write itself somehow, he would probably lose his job. He didn't have any illusions in this regard. As soon as neural networks got, get smart enough, he and dozen of other ghostwriters will vanish into morning mist of a new era in literature. He didn't have much of a name or connections, only some skill and a knack to meet the deadlines for the most part. The client was content with this. He was content with the pay. So everything went well until the pills stopped started failing him blam this time the tick got too strong his foot jerked and hit the board with a very noticeable pain seemed like he even heard his toe crack he muttered a short curse and rolled his chair away from the desk although he knew now that his attention was not fixed on the blank text file the tick should go away all by itself it's funny how the consciousness is detached from the body he often thought about it, especially while having insomnia. It's like you're working as a team, but your partner starts pulling something. You seem to have common goals, but w but when all hell breaks loose, you suddenly you are suddenly left alone with it, and your partner is more interested in watching the fire than the f than fighting it. In the end, you have no idea what's on uh, you have no idea what's on his mind. Well, at least there won't be any more knocking. Good. <clears throat> a small window at the far side of the room flashed white for a moment. A storm? Now that he thought about it, the day was hot. 
The vicious, stagnant air still filled the room. This and the barely audible squeak of an overheated network filter, he became sensitive to, su to such things when he couldn't sleep for a long time, made the entire room seem to vibrate a little. Like a cocoon that's about to hatch. Actually, that did sound like a good line. He rolled back to the table and was about to write that thought down, but paused over the keyboard. He remembered the individual words and the general idea, but the sentence had already slipped away. This time, the white light seemed to fill the entire room. Then a thunder rolled, resembling a low gut roar of something large and famished. Good lord. I wonder, hold on. Do I have automatic settings? Uh... Language, sound, master volume, voice volume. Oh, I have it in English. I'm doing it in Japanese because the English sounds weird as fuck, I think. Yeah, he called to God way too often for someone who ever goes to church. Just a habit he inherited from his mother. A furious patter of raindrops pounded on his window. By the way, this game is, I think, originally in Japanese. There's no way he could work like this. Not now, but maybe it's for the best. Since he was a little boy, he slept well during the storms. Had to seize the moment. He groped for a packer of sleeping pills. It's nice to have your working tools at hand. Popped the pills into his mouth and opened the window to hear the steady patter of the rain. Then he went to bed and collapsed on top of the bed sheets. His clothes still on. He could tell by the sound of the water had flooded the windowsill and was trickling down on the floor. He decided that it was a small price to pay. He felt a pleasant chill of cloth beneath his cheek. The wavering haze was gradually fading from the room, yet the sleep did not come. He tried to take off his shoes, change position, take a pillow, cover himself, throw the pillow away to the other side of the room. Nothing helped. He just laid there with his eyes closed, and though he clo his closed eyelids felt heavy, he felt, knew it was an illusion. All in vain. He's not sleeping. He can't sleep. <clears throat> Thud. At first, he thought he was imagining things. Thud. 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 Sometimes the knocking paused, but it never stopped completely. The sound came from below, from the first floor. Someone was banging insistently on the door. And with each thud, he could feel the rage building up like a tight knot of pain around his stomach. He is trying to sleep. It was really hard. Is it really that hard to just leave a man alone? At least at night, at least in the house that he pays for, specifically so that no one would bother him. He opened his eyes, easy, just as he thought, sprang to his feet, and ran down the stairs. Something was boiling inside of him. Halfway to the door, he took a turn to the cupboard and pulled out an old baseball bat. He won't likely, he, he wasn't at likely to actually use it. He asked himself if he would as he reached the door handle. No, he certainly wouldn't, but he's angry, and he wanted the night guest to learn it. He wants the night guest to learn it. Sometimes I can't speak. What the hell? The rain was still pouring, or rather, it was actually getting stronger, as his mother would say, and the floodgates of heaven tore open. His mother used to say a lot of things. That was on the list of reasons why he had to rent this overpriced house where anyone could just start banging the door in the middle of the night. A cat, for example. What the hell? He said it again, this time aloud. A cat was standing on his porch. She looked like a purebred British shorthair in all respects, except for the color. Aside from the smoky gray head, it seemed as if she was dropped into a vat of white paint, while her lower part was dipped into a black one. Wet fur clung to her small, rather skinny body, dripping with water. The cat 
could have probably slipped into the house as soon as the door opened, but instead she froze, as if waiting for the host to say something. It was cold outside, much colder than one might think. He didn't feel angry anymore. All right, come in. Oh, cool. It literally, oh, because I've played this game before, it apps, it lets, it skips the first option. Normally there is a, uh, there's a dialogue option. I probably should delete the file and just to redo it. Uh, there's a dialogue option where you could choose not to let her in. And if you keep refusing, it just change, it forces you to. It's hilarious. He stepped aside, freezing the doorway. The cat didn't move. So you don't want to, huh? He was about to say, fine then, close the door, go back to the second floor, and lie in a suffocating half-sleep until morning. Or maybe it will. But he finally realized what was wrong. The bat. He threw it away, aiming for the sofa, but missed. The bat clattered on the floorboards. The cat followed it into the darkness with her round, yellow eyes. The sound didn't frighten her. He sighed. I won't hurt you. Come on in if you want. Cat raised her eyes to him. For the first time, he actually saw and couldn't help admiring how big and yellow they were. The cat's pupils were also large and incredibly round, like two full moons in an eclipse. Just as he was about to close the door for the second time, the cat murmured something and fluttered into the house, butting him with her wet head as she passed by. He smiled. Yeah, it did, it did skip the option. Strictly speaking, at this very moment, his line had ended. If the landlady found out, he would sure, and he sure, he was sure she would, he'd have to look for a new place to live. There's plenty of lonely, bored seniors in the neighborhood, he thought. <clears throat> and they only had two hobbies, observing and reporting. The subject and the recipient aren't that important. Well, it's fine. Maybe he'd leave the suburbs. Maybe he'd move to an apartment since he was getting privacy, didn't him get since him getting privacy didn't work out anyway. The rain was getting stronger still. He closed the door. Yeah, it did let me it did force me to skip the uh the beginning option. Probably would have been best if I actually like deleted the episodes uh the um the previous game. That might have been what's fucking it up. The cat explored the house with ca uh, cautious curiosity, stopping by different objects as if trying to understand their purpose. Watching that was amusing, so amusing he even forgot about the stain. When he remembered, it was already spread out, a dark spot of water in the place where the cat clung to him. He pulled the wet cloth away from his body and stared at it blankly for a moment, then almost groaned aloud. The cat was soaked, so she probably got a little dirt in the house. He decided not to turn on the light. He had enough disappointment for the night. Instead, he went to get a towel. All right, come here. The cat turned her head to the voice and froze in place. She was examining the TV, a lifeless black mirror of plasma panel and a liquor flame frame that he couldn't, he hadn't even touched since moving in. In the reflection, the cat herself looked black. She gave him a long, appraising look and then with sudden eagerness trotted towards him, deftly avoiding the obstacles. He was surprised. Maybe the cat decided he was more interesting than the TV. Or maybe she acted out of respect for her host's will. Anyway, he felt grateful. Finally, someone he act can actually negotiate with. Suddenly, he thought of how nice it would be to crawl under the blanket with a warm ball of fur. fur. It would surely have helped, surely help him fall asleep. As a child, he had a cat, gray, huge, brass, immersely, immensely ugly, and equally beloved. He often fell asleep hugging him. Oop, skipped that. Oh well. The cat's name was Timo, and he faded it into a June night many years ago. The wet cat bumped her, uh, the cat bumped her wet head against him once more. He thought that cats usually shake off water themselves. Usually, but perhaps not always. Hey, easy there, you're all wet. The cat looked at him with moon-shaped eyes and murdered, murmured something again. Do something about it then. He smiled and got to work. He had to squeeze the fur thoroughly, so the towel soon turned into a wet rag. Should he bathe the cat? Doesn't matter. Ooh. <sighs> Neither one matters, I don't... Th well, this one actually might matter. Um, hmm. 
Should we go with Fade the Cat? I think I want to just to test out if streamer mode is activated and if it actually will uh, do what it should. Let me make sure Halloween, the BRB scene is back so I can fuck it just in case. We're going to bait the cat. I don't know if he'll skip the scene or not, but we'll see. This won't do. I'll give you a bath. We'll see. As he carried her to the bathroom, the cat stayed still in his arms. A warm, incredibly light body pressed against his chest. He was expecting the cat to bring out the claws any moment. Maybe as he opens the door? Now? Or as he turns the light on, maybe this time, but nothing happened. The cat glanced around the new room and looked at him again with her intelligent, almost human-like gaze. Not a single muscle in her small body moved. She was curious and that was about it. She trusts me. He was about to ask her if she knows where they were and what was going on to happen next, but that was too much. So, uh, shouldn't be t very difficult. The two of us can manage this. What do you think? He read somewhere a cat should get used to a new surrounding before bathing. Fear is born out of the unknown, and in that regard, people haven't gone too far from cats. New scents, unfamiliar objects, and splashing of water, they are just shadows under the bed that will fall back if you get a better look at them. He carefully put the cat on the floor. She looked around the room again and returned her questioning eyes to him. It seemed like she got comfortable enough. He turned on the water in the shower and felt a gentle touch. The cat was already loitering around his feet. She was curious instead, uh, indeed. The shower isn't as bad as compared to the rain, is it? The joke came out a little awkward. He felt embarrassed and didn't know why. Okay, I think we're good. It's gonna cover everything. I'm pretty certain I could just skip this. She's just a cat. Maybe it was how the water glistened on her skin or how she was looking at him. Oh, that's interesting. I never noticed that it did that. I don't know. I'm going to skip most of this. All right. <clears throat> Bathroom shimmered, molten, bright, pulsating with light or darkness. He felt like he was losing, losing his balance, and he pulled his hands aw hand away, but she returned and pressed it. Okay. I'm going to have to... I'll be right back. i got to make sure. Okay. Who Had to make sure something... Uh, We, we were good. <laughs> Had to make sure we were good. There was just a quick scene. He couldn't remember how he ended up in the living room again. Oh, hold on. Give it a second. <laughs> I had to double. I, I almost thought that the game was going to grab itself. I couldn't remember what the censored version was like because it's been so long. Because I have the uncensored version. I've been watching that one. The cat was napping peacefully in his arms. He abs he abs absently ran his hand down the cat's wet back, tracing the bumps of her spine with his fingers. I should get you some food. Let me see what I have. He got up with a tad bit difficulty, nothing he can't handle. Still, his body felt unusually heavy and unwieldy. He had to give the cat something to eat. He'll lie down afterwards, and then, hell, maybe he'll even fall asleep. <clears throat> Maybe he should have gotten a cat from, from from much earlier, a ball of fur with a pair of moon eyes and velvety voice that we can always negotiate with. And that's about it. That's kind of funny. He could have avoided all the suffering only if only he had a cat. The kitchen blurred before his eyes. He got to the refrigerator and opened it, squinting from the light and leaning on the door way harder than he was supposed to. If the landlady was around at the time, she would have told him exactly so. Don't lean on the door. After all, this is her house and her refrigerator, and everything should be neat and tidy in case she was to move new tenants in. That is oddly specific. Perhaps the landlady wouldn't even warn him about the milk. The milk itself is completely harmless. Unless, of course, you are allergic to lactose, but there is a special kind of lactose milk, right? What matters is the bottle. Bottles, much like cats, can vary greatly, but this particular one was made of glass. If only the landlord was here, she would probably have told him not to touch the bottle because he's falling on the floor, and the bottle might break, and then the milk will spill, and he'll have nothing to feed the nice cat he found, or rather, it was her who found him, and very timely because... 
he was lying on the floor. He had been lying there for some time and wouldn't have been lying still if he hadn't felt the light touch of something hot and rough on his cheek. It was almost like a dream, although, of course, comparing sleep with fainting isn't quite correct, no matter how you look at it. The floor beneath him was surprisingly hard, cold, and wet. He felt all these three qualities clearly and was afraid to imagine what would happen if he tried to move. But he had to move, one way or another at least to see what was up, because something hot and rough was still sliding up his cheek, gradually creeping up to his ear. He felt a warm breath, and then a cautious bite. Ouch! He jumped on the spot. A shadow rushed to the side, then calmly began to lap milk from a puddle. And this is where you guys get my cover screen, actually. <laughs> my background screen. Ugh. There's also a part that skipped, I think because I have played the game before, that was really creepy, really weird shit. You guys are getting the tamed version, I think. The cat. What are you doing? The cat looked at him briefly and licked her lips. No need to be this dramatic. I, I did it in Japanese because I actually prefer it in Japanese. It sounds weird in English. You're lying around and idly, and you're not even a cat, see? Besides, you're soaked in milk. Well, you're right. I let you down and now had to get my punishment. I let myself down, too. Good lord, now there's, a cleaning, there's cleaning to do until the next advent... Like this, mother would have would have said, I'll go get a rag. Stay here and don't ruin what's left of the kitchen while I'm gone. The cat watched him go with a skeptical look. Diego, go. Aren't you the one who's been causing tr all the trouble so far? When he returned with the bucket, the cat was gone. Cat, speaking of cat, oh wow, it did not skip this. Okay, cool, great. The weird shit's happening. Go, Diego. Ow, I hurt myself. In the kitchen, something exciting was happening. Take, you'll need a blade. Do you have the pills? Scratch out the entrails. The Egyptians widely used the honey for embalming and preserving food. Later, their recipes were adapted by the Greeks. Also, add, oh, add a teaspoon of apricot jam, a walnut, and a little cinnamon. Before baking, put a teaspoon of butter on top of redacted. Microwave for five to seven minutes at full power. Don't listen to them scream. Bon appetit. The next time he saw her was in a few days, or maybe a week. He always had a bad sense of time, especially when he was immersed in his work. He still couldn't sleep, but at least he was making some progress with the script. It was a narrative game project, as the customer called it, but actually meant do whatever you have to to finish it on time, else forget about payment. And so he did, although he was resentful and that got in the way a lot. The reason of those feelings was the cat. He knew how stupid it was, but he couldn't help it. He forgave her for the bite almost immediately. That wasn't the thing. He was bitter about how the cat ran away, despite him trying his best to take care of her. She was nowhere to be found in the house, so he immediately thought about an open window on the second floor. Maybe he should have closed it. He dwelled on the thought for a while. He'd even approached the window at some point, but in the end, he decided not to do anything about it. He was hoping... Yeah. What? Did I miss something? Yeah, I'm playing a different game. <laughs> I played quite a few games. Uh, 
He was hoping that there was no shame in that. It's not the same as your uh, turn up 10 and start eyeing girls. The cat would come back. And she did. I'm playing Celine now. He had settled himself. He had just settled himself on a sofa with some with some book. Some was the word, as he couldn't remember a thing from the cover, even though he had read the title several times. The symbols were floating before his eyes, and of course he couldn't make out a word. No wonder, considering he didn't sleep at all. When you think about it, it was surprising he could write in this state. Either way, he was barely following the book, so he wasn't upset at all when a fluffy head butted his hand. Hey, I'm trying to read here. And you don't seem to be getting anywhere. What does it matter anyways? Better scratch me right here. He complied. You were absent for a long for so long. I thought you won't come won't come be back. Then why didn't you close the window upstairs? There's a big difference between expectations and hopes. He had learned that well. Why did you leave? Did I do anything wrong? The cat stayed silent. Ooh. Bitterness, happiness. Bitterness, happiness. Ooh, which option should I choose? This changes things. This can lead to bad endings, actually. Uh, I'm gonna go happiness. Alright, it doesn't matter so much. Diego, that much. I'm happy, to ha I'm happy to have you back. After all, there's no point in his grudge from the start. Nobody gains anything by holding on to small grudges and staying blind to what they really feel. He won't, wouldn't have won anything. It's not a damn lottery. The cat rubbed against his arm again. He put the book down and gently placed her in his lap. The locket around her neck unexpectedly cold touched his skin. Then he had a hunch. Do you go home? I have no home. Well, someone must be caring about you if they put that collar on. Diego, I will- Look, is it because I'm playing a story about another cat, Diego? Is that why you're so ed edgy right now? Sometimes a collar is just a collar. Honestly, I think it's because I haven't fed them yet. I'll probably have to do it in a second. Don't you know? This time it was him who stayed silent. The cat buried her head in, t in his stomach. Want me to take it off? No. It's mine now. <clears throat> Besides, it's easier this way if I catch someone's eye in the streets. He nodded, because if you think about it, that is really a reasonable choice. The cat's fur was thick and smooth, very pleasant to the touch. He wanted to bury his face in it to find out what it smelled like. What she smelled like. Do you have a name? Of course. Everything has a name. And what is yours? The cat looked at him carefully with her bright yellow eyes, as if saying, take a guess. But she didn't actually say anything. On her locket, there was a small engraving, a crescent moon that was dimly shining in the pale light coming out of the window. Celine. The cat looked at, up at him. Her pupils flickered into two full moons in an eclipse. Then she rubbed against his arm one last time, stood up, stretching, arching her back. Don't close the window on the second floor. I won't. She left, but the name stayed with him, in and around the house. Celine. So hummed the glass, white in the moonlight. So whispered the long shadows of the branches outside the window. Focus on the name, it doesn't matter. Now this, I think, leads to div uh, diversions in the game. I'm gonna focus on the name. What is Celine? For some reason, the question bothered him. He vaguely remembered it had something to do with mythology. Sure, things never really caught his interest, but fortunately he knew someone he could turn to. This will change who I'm, uh, the game drastically. This is the longer version.
I'm playing it this way because this is how I played it originally, I think. Meanie. You know I can't stand them. Uh, and this is this is the change. This is for the other one. The other side of the game. And you know it's me who'll have to take care of it all after. After all, you're basically living in the office. This is between this is the story section between Ethan and Hope, which is the other characters in this game. Ethan never liked cats. And the dogs, too, not much of a difference. He didn't like the very idea of keeping a predator at home, even a small one. He couldn't have quite explain why. Hope sighed. She closed the tab with the Cattery's website, then slapped her husband lightly on the shoulder. Even so, the faces of the Persian cat, deeply depressed and equally concave, still lingered before his mind's eye. Ethan held up his hand in a conciliatory gesture. He knew it wasn't over yet. Hope is not the one to give in this easy. She never was, and for him, there was something incredibly appealing about it. Come to think of it, quite possibly it'd be, it, it'll be him who ca capitulates in the end. In a relationship, you always have to sacrifice something. In four and a half years, or even five according to Hope, he had learned this quite well. Suddenly, Hope frowned, looking at the screen. Seems like you got an email from a... Uh, Damn, a tough one. I can't quite read it. <clears throat> I think it hit your work e uh, mailbox. Let me see. I hope I got a new project. Hold on, I'm going to take a drink of water. The Middle Ages are fine and all, but they're about to start pouring out of my ears. Ethan reached for his laptop, but Hope grabbed it and dodged him. <laughs> right. Why don't we talk contracts on a Sunday evening? So which, so which one of us is all work and no play, hmm? Well, sure. Uh, well, such are the benefits of freelance. <laughs> Come on, give it back. Hope giggled and leaned over the armrest, hanging over the floor. Hope's defenses withstood several more attacks, each time Ethan thought the laptop would definitely hit the floor. Then she gave Ethan a peck on the cheek and slid off the couch. The laptop returned to its owner. Alright, alright, I give up. Huh, strange. There is no voice acting for this line. I mean, what if they actually gave you a new contract, but on the same old Middle Ages? Now that would be a twist. Yeah, a hilarious one. But there was nothing about the Middle Ages in the letter. Not a mention of a payment, too. E Ethan read it several times. Leaving the formalities aside, there's about what there was but one question in the letter. Ethan, or rather the part of him that was responsible for finding the accurate answers, got immediately engaged by the wording. What is Selene? Ethan rolled the, that question around in his mouth, as if tasting it. At a glance, the answer was simple. Ethan's real passion was the early re re Renaissance, but he was a history consultant after all. At least he liked to think of himself that much. The agency was paying him for a reason. He needed no research to tell that Selene was the goddess of the moon in the ancient Greece. The question, however, seemed to be way more intrigued, uh, intricate in its nature. Or at least that's what Eaton, Ethan wanted to think because the Middle Ages was actually about to start pouring out of his ears. He was always diving into his work completely and living in an age where madness, curse, and death were cont are contagious in an exhausting trial. He needed some distraction. Of course, he had a part-time job with those online courses, but the platform where he lectured wasn't planning anything new just yet. All in all, the request looked interesting, if not for one small matter, the payment, or rather the lack thereof. Ethan hesitated. The sender's name seemed familiar. 
He searched the email address and found out they, were al they already worked together on a couple of texts. Both times, his efforts were duly paid for by the agency. Ethan never worked for free. It was his principle rather than a matter of necessity. Oh, it wasn't his principle but rather a matter of necessity? That's a weird word. English translations, people. The problem here was the fact that Ethan loved that he was what he was doing too much. If you're trying to make money from what you love, that's a slippery slope. A free service there, an unpaid consultant consultation here, and then you go back to splitting the sheet projectors eight hours a day, watching your dreams rust away. <clears throat> Besides, Ethan didn't want to let Hope down. Of course, she supported him when he decided to go freelance, but Ethan never wanted to take advantage of that. No, that won't do. He, his work only, he works only on their contract and does not give free consul, uh, consultations. God, English. Just as he was about to give that as a response, Hope's fair head popped up from behind the door. Are you coming? On the walk, Hope brought up the cat thing a few times. Ethan protested absently. His thoughts were back to the letter again and again. That question. The more he thought about it, the more he wanted to find the answer. It was no longer a matter of helping an acquaintance whose name Ethan immediately forgot. No, it was Ethan himself who needed a little help with distraction and an answer. That was a weird thing uh, to do, but Ethan waited. Uh, but Ethan waited until Hope was fast asleep. Not only did he sneak over to his li laptop to write a response. Certainly, he had no real answers as of yet. He threw in a dozen polite words in general meeting of which he was, he had taken up the case. Then he clicked send. When Ethan returned to bed, Hope was still breathing slow and deep. He listened to her breathe for a while, trying not to think that he had broken his own rule. After all, he really needed a distraction. No matter the strength of your affection, sooner or later, you will want to take a break. It was another thing he learned over the past four and a half years. If Ethan had to point out when things started to be off, he would say it was on a, it was on Saturday. That was, that is, about a week after the first letter. But this, of course, wouldn't be accurate. Those weird things start happening almost immediately after he pressed the send button. The first night he saw a room in his dreams. A chipped white ceiling, similarly rough walls filled with fluorescent lamps. Ethan couldn't see the lamps themselves, but he recognized the old shimmering light. They often used those lamps in the office. The light filled the room to the brim. Ethan thought it was about to burst and then the light would splash all over the room just like the juice from a squashed tomato. Apart from the walls and the light, the room had a red sofa. The sofa stood just a bit aside from the center, not too large, quite faded, flooded with shimmering white light. This light made the sofa seem to be trembling a little and the room trembled with it. Suddenly, Ethan thought it would be way better if the sofa was standing right in the middle. Then he felt something on his temple. A touch. He had to flinch, scream, stumble to the side, yet he couldn't. He was paralyzed. Only his eyes could move, and they desperately tried to reach beyond his field of vision where something was touching his temple. Ethan felt a faint flow of air as if someone was whispering in his ear. He did hear the whisper. Just one word. Ethan no longer remembered what the word was when he jumped up in his bed, gasping for air. Hope muttered something in her sleep and turned to the other side. It took a long time to get back to sleep, but by morning Ethan did pass out, and when he woke up, the dream wiped out of his mind pretty quick. The task at hand interested him much more than the muck, than some muck spilling out of his subconscious. 
He was thinking about the task while he was chewing in the morning toast, on the morning toast, driving to the bank and all the way back. It was like a Christmas present waiting for its time in the, waiting for its time in the closet. The more you tell yourself you shouldn't think about it, the more you do. At home, Ethan tried to stick to his plan, working on the project he paid for, but ended up sitting over a single report for several hours. He couldn't squeeze out a letter. To hell with it. After all, he was almost done with his current project. It wouldn't be much of a problem if he presented the result a bit late on it. Besides, it was really time for him to get a breather. One couldn't be spending so much time in a world where madness, curse, and death were contagious. To hell with it. Ethan thought as he closed the files of the project he was he, had, he was paid for. There was plenty of information, but Ethan knew he could not get an answer right away. The accurate answers, just like the precious per per pearls, laid at great, great depths. He had to go down to the very bottom. Ethan was not afraid. He had done that done it many times. His counterpart might not might have to wait a week or so, but Ethan knew he'll manage to crack the riddle. What he didn't know is, what else could be found at the at these those great depths? And at some point in this investigation, things started happening. He started hearing sparse phrases, even though he never turned on the TV or radio. Hope wasn't even at home. When he sat in front of the screen, once again trying to connect the dots in his research, he could feel someone looking at the back of his head. When he turned around, of course, there was no one in the room. Eventually, he taught himself not to turn around. He just got angry, pushing his fingers into his temples, when a familiar feeling appeared again. He started losing things. Or rather, things would disappear and then reappear in the strangest places. One day, he found his pencil in the freezer, stuck in a minced meat brisket. Even when the brisket melted down, he couldn't pull the whole pencil out. All Ethan got was a bloody stump. At this point, he could stop and he could stop and think of it, but got distracted by the coffee maker and mindlessly shoved the stump in the trash can bin. There was something wrong with the shadows, too. They became sharper, thicker, and deeper. And it was in the it was the case in the hold it was and it was the case in the whole apartment. Wow, that's worded really weirdly. Hey Diego, you gotta move, bud. I'm trying to read shit. Sometimes they moved. Of course, Ethan only felt like they were moving. It couldn't have been any other way. Ethan didn't really pay attention to any of this, just like he did with that dream he had. All of that seemed very familiar, as he already experienced similar things during the periods of intense work when his nervous system was exhausted by the workload. There always was a rational explanation. The stress, or those new, much more environmentally friendly light bulbs that Hope had installed all over the apartment. Besides, it's so it's so easy to dismiss this sort of things when you're deeply invested in something, and this question really got Ethan involved. Every time he seemed to get it right, his thought he thought <clears throat> every time he seemed to get it right, his thought went off, like he was climbing a rock, but a so soft safe ledge suddenly turned into a slippery turned slippery, and the next thing he knew he was at the bottom again. He never faced anything like this during his previous research. There were times he had to spend weeks or months looking for the right answers. Those were the tricky cases, but at least he could always tell how his research was progressing. This time, he was stumbling in his tracks without knowing why, and that's all he could tell. All, all he could tell. The week was over, but he still had nothing to send back to his contact. In his reply, Ethan asked a couple of questions, not that he was really interested, just a courtesy. And that's how their surprisingly exciting email conversation started. With this, Ethan's contact grew to be something more. Something of a friend, maybe. 
He never asked how Ethan's work was progressing. That This was the question Ethan asked himself, and the answer was never good for him. Of course, he started sleeping badly. Falling asleep was easy, but he woke up many times during the night, sometimes in a cold sweat. Ethan could not remember his dreams. That night, he woke up about three or four times. At first, Ethan was lucky enough to fall asleep almost immediately after he woke up. But at some point, his eyes got open again. This time, the sleep wouldn't come. Ethan felt terribly thirsty. He found no slippers in the usual spot. The noise could wake up hope, so he decided not to look for them and only regretted it when re approaching the kitchen. The floor was bloody cold. So cold that Ethan unconsciously looked down. The fucking sound. This is the... Hey, kitty. Oh, these are one of the unskippable scenes. Interesting. And when he was looking up again, he saw a shadow. No doubt that shadow belonged to a woman. A naked woman. Ethan could clearly see the points. Oh, wow. Uh, it's fucking Christ. The shadow moved slowly along the route. I'm gonna do us a favor and switch us to a, a screen that you can't watch. <laughs> Because I don't know how much Twitch will like this shadow. I just noticed it. The shadows moved slowly along the wall, floating in a rectangle pool filled with moonlight. She was dancing. She was dancing and humming silent, and Ethan's ears was her music. Oh, and the humming silence was Ethan's ear, and Ethan's ears was her music. Ethan was watching her, unable to move. He was paralyzed, just like back then in his dream but he did not remember it. And at, at that moment, he didn't remember anything at all. Couldn't think about anything at all. What is this? He felt an itch in his eyes and the monetary urge to blink. Oh, hold on. For a fraction of a second, he could only see the thick, vicious blackness, darkness, and then he opened his eyes again and there was no shadow anymore. For a fraction of a second, he could only see the thick... Oh, I read that already. The glowing rectangle shifted its place and now laid on the kitchen floor at Ethan's feet. He could see the cold white light flowing into the seams between the tiles on the floor. <clears throat> For some reason, he took a deep breath, then stepped forward into the rectangular light. Rectangular... Rect, re, the rectangle of light. Jesus Christ. Nothing happened. And what was supposed to happen? What did he really see? Did he really see anything? He walked deeper into the room, much bolder, grabbed the decanter and started to drink in big, greedy sips. Water streamed down his chin and his chest, and chest hitting the tiles on the floor and poured into the grooves of the scene. No, that wasn't a delusion. The kitchen was completely empty and the floor felt warm again, and it yet wasn't a delusion. Of all the and all of this begging for a rational explanation. That's why Ethan decided he should talk to Hope in the morning. Did you give anyone the apartment keys, you know, by chance? Huh? What? Hope froze with the cup a cup at her lips and blinked several times. Maybe you let someone in? I didn't, no. What's with these questions? I feel like someone is visiting our place. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. It's been a while since I started noticing random things vanish, and yesterday I... Hope frowned. She looked at Ethan as if a toad had just popped out of his mouth. Yesterday, you... what? Ooh. Say it bluntly, answer evasively. Hmm, how do I do this? Which one should I go? One of these will kill me in the end, I think. Uh, answer evasively. Let's do it. Forget it. Come on, maybe you've left the keys unattended somewhere. I'm 
I always leave my keys when I'm in the office, and I'm pretty sure there are no cat burglars along my among my colleagues. Come to think of it, we should have hired a bunch. That balanced the risk of going broke we had on a monthly basis. You're sure none of your colleagues would have played a joke on us? A joke? Good God, Ethan, you look like you're about to eat me alive. Take a bun instead. Tastes better. Trust me. Hope pulled her chair closer to Ethan and took his hand. Please, hon, promise me you'll take a break after that project of yours is finished. I mean... I mean, one cycle is enough for our family. You promise? Ethan suddenly felt like a total idiot. A tired total idiot. A naked girl in their kitchen? Yeah, sure. He probably overworked to the point he started being delirious at times. Maybe even walked in his sleep. He squeezed Hope's fingers lightly. I promise. Sorry, I'm a moron. I probably stopped seeing the difference between dream and reality. <clears throat> Why don't you call Laura? No, a shrink is the last thing I need right now. Probably should have done it. My bad. Sure, but that's... But that'd be just too cruel. What I need is to finish that project. After that, all the gears in my head will fall into place. I give you my word. Don't be like that. I mean, there is there's no need to start full-fledged therapy anyway. Sometimes talking through your worries with a professional is all it takes to feel better. At least I shouldn't have pressed you into it. I get that you've had enough problems of your own right now. How's it going in your new position? Hope rest her head on his shoulders and shrugged. Not fired yet, apparently. Seriously though, I haven't figured it out yet. Those new responsibilities are exciting, but I always feel like I'm 10 times slower than I should be. I should probably I should probably get ready for a nice fat piece of overtime by the end of the month. Ethan kissed her forehead, closed his eyes, and squidged, squeezed the bridge of his nose. Well, I'm not a head of a department as of yet, but I seem to have the same stuff on my plate. Just how do you manage not to pester me with stupid questions? Well, I eat cupcakes at night. You should give it a try. Hope poked Ethan's cheek a couple of times with her finger. Anyways, don't worry. I, I didn't give keys to anyone and the only cat anything I've let inside was an actual stray cat. Hmm, now that I think of it, it's been ages since we've had any company. Maybe we should... A cat? What cat? Hope sighed and pulled away. <clears throat> Please don't get all work up. Worked up, okay? <sighs> At least I'm being open with you. Don't worry. Sh she didn't wander around. Hope we talked about uh, talked uh, talked this over already. We talked over what? The fact that what I want doesn't really matter. Damn it, Hope! This is my apartment, and I. And you're staying here alone now. Hope finished her tea in a couple of gulps. I have to get to the office. She stopped at the door, not turning around. So Sorry about the cat. She was really skinny, and I felt sorry for her. 
I also feel sorry for myself, Ethan, because I'm lonely. Really lonely. This time, Ethan felt like an angry idiot. He got up from the table and reached for Hope. Hope, I... Don't. I'll start crying. It'll take time and I don't have any spare to uh, any to spare right now. See you tonight. See you tonight. He didn't know what else to say, so he followed Hope into the hall like a silent shadow. He thought the right words would come to him, but the entrance door closed and he remained silent. Ethan sighed. He regretted his decision to talk about the night episode. He regretted how he the how the talk turned out. He felt sorry for himself and for Hope. After all, Ethan was well aware of that. He didn't really spend enough time with her. At first because of the a uh, agency project, now because of the question to which he still could not find an answer. It was time to end this. He was going to make coffee, make some coffee, then he'll open the laptop and write up some answer. It won't be an accurate one, but, it'll re it, but it's really time to finish that work ma marathon. After all, he doesn't even get paid for his time. Ethan nodded to the closed door and turned around, ready to execute the plan. Oh. Then he saw her. Just for a split second, but damn it, he saw her. A black-haired girl flashed in the doorway of one of the rooms. Not even flashed, but drifted. Like a... Ethan's mouth went dry. Shadow. Of course there was no one in the room. This has gone too far. Ethan has gone too far, but he couldn't turn back, even though he was going to. He didn't even make any coffee. He wanted to get rid of that question, to get a good night's sleep, and to forget about the whole thing. Forget about the shadow that danced in his kitchen. To forget about the pale silhouette that wandered through his apartment. Forget that th at this very moment someone is looking at the back of his head. And that look makes his skin feel as cold as the kitchen floor last night. And the hairs, one by one, stand on end. Ethan clenched his teeth, not with anger, but with some new emotion he couldn't name. The blood hummed in his ears, louder and louder. It'll be all over after he writes the letter. It'll be over. He opened his laptop, his hand shaking a little, and was putting his fingers over the keyboard when his cell phone rang. Ethan flinched. He stared blankly at He stared blankly for a few seconds as the vibrating rectangle of glass and plastic crawled across the table. Don't. Don't do not answer. Don't do it. Suddenly he grabbed the phone and pushed the accept button. Ethan himself didn't know how that happened. He just did it. That's all. The phone pressed tight against his ear. He waited for a hoarse, gurgling voice to call his name and tell him to look behind. Or what was what is supposed to happen in case like, cases like this. Ethan. Hope. Were you expecting someone else, you dolt? Okay, sorry. I'm super uneasy, and so I'm talking nonsense. Yeah, I'm pretty... I'm easy, I'm uneasy, too. And that was completely true. I'm just... Look, am I distracting you right now? You are, and I'm very happy about that. Come on, please. That's great. Look, it didn't come off well at breakfast, right? Yes. I'm sorry I'm being awful. No, I'm sorry. Both of us... Oh, I always forget I have to wait for the text to go through. Both of us have it hard now, so let's try not to fight, okay? Great idea. Why don't we go out tonight? Say for groceries? <clears throat> Counts as going out if you ask me. I'll go crazy for being cooped up like this. Oh, so that's what's driving me nuts. Should go out for zucchini more often. 
So what do you say? Okay, we're going to buy all the zucchini tonight. What the fuck? That's a weird thing to do. Half Hope laughed. Ethan suddenly realized that the blood wasn't buzzing in his ears. No one was looking at the back of his head, and if he turned around, he could only see Hope's socks that she left on the chair again. Hope? Yes? I love you. I love you too, very much. See you tonight. Can I pause this real quick at this point? Yes, I can. I'm going to be right back. I have to go use the restroom. Roommate is in the bathroom, so I'm going to hold off and go when he gets out. Oh, do not escape. After finishing the call, he turned around. The socks were resting peacefully on the chair, which meant everything was okay. He went back to the mail and only then noticed several new letters. Two of them were from his counterpart. Ethan hesitated. He had already decided his course of action concerning the question, so there was no harm in taking a look. He, wasn't, he won't feel any guilt. After all, he had already done far more than he should have. Of course, he is a lifesaver for those wanting to sell books mentioning historical accuracy, but having no intention to pay for it properly. And so what? He doesn't have to do a perfect job for free. Hell, he doesn't even have to work for, he doesn't even work for free. That's what uh, Ethan thought. He then opened the two letters he got and changed his highly reasonable decision. <laughs> his counterpart was asking how soon he would get an answer. So, this happened after all. The tone was very polite and apologetic. He wasn't expecting anything, but he really, really needed the help of someone competent. According to the emails, he wasn't doing very well. The poor man had been suffering from insomnia for an insane amount of time and it seems that he too began imagining things it was as if ethan saw himself from the outside he suddenly felt very sorry for his acquaintance of course he had begun to feel sorry for him earlier but now ethan felt a sharp bitter pity he realized that if he helped his acquaintance he would help himself and if he steps back now what is the value of a specialist who is afraid of a little challenge oh shit Sorry, totally forgot to move you guys back. As Hope, you didn't miss anything. Uh, as Hope once said, the career ladder is made of thorn. Oh, give it a second. Of course, he no longer worked in an office, but professional growth requires twice as much effort if you're self-employed. And besides, Ethan had Hope. Hope, who never gives in so easily and forgets her socks on the chair. Hope, who loves him very much. Hope, who will go to the store with him tonight because being cooped up like this can drive one crazy. This is what was happening to his acquaintance right now. Ethan had to help him. Not because of money, but because he could, and it was because of it was the right thing to do. He'll, they will both finish their projects, and then they'll have a good rest. They might even go out of a, uh, for a glass of beer together. So Ethan thought to get back to the question with a newfound strength. The pages of the books did not rustle in the far corner of the room. The shadows weren't wandering in the corridor, and certainly no one looked ba at the back of his head while until the evening. And in the evening, Hope came back. Hope looked up from her magazine and leaned over the armrest. You had a call from the agency. Ethan just looked, uh, just got back from the shower. He froze in place, clutching the towel at his waist. Something cold stirred uncomfortably in his stomach. The project. 
He had completely forgotten about the agency project, and it had been more than two weeks. The deadline was very close. He started for the phone, but Hope just waved her hand lazily. <clears throat> Don't worry, I picked it up. What did you tell them? I told them you stopped eating, sleeping, and loving anything other than work, so they'll get their files all nice and shiny. Pretty accurate, huh? Wow, that was a that's a fucking stab. Yeah. Just don't pick up my phone again, okay? Hope shrugged. Sure. I mean, it was you who asked me to answer the calls in the first place. Yes, I know. When I just start working for them, it's important to let them see that I am always in touch. But now I've passed the probation period, there's no point in piling this on you any longer. Thanks for recovering for me. No problem. If you're getting a call and I'm not too lazy to pick it up, I can keep watching your back. No, you really shouldn't. This project is complicated. I'll be back. I have returned. Welcome back. Hi, uh, let's get us back into the scene. Oh, I kind of used my stream BRB. I need to fucking move those. Um, hold on, let me move those real quick. You guys are just going to see some crazy movement going on. So I can uh, do that faster. Halloween stream and there we go. Stream end, stream start, stream. Yep, there we go. Better, so much better. All right. I'd rather deal with it myself. All right, we're back. Ethan sat rigid. He never considered himself a good liar, but Hope didn't seem to notice anything. She sighed, pretending to be upset, and rolled her eyes. Well now, guess I'm being fired from an unpaid secretary position without any honors or compensation. Capitalism sucks. Ethan leaned over, tucked a strand of blonde hair behind her ear, and looked into her eyes. His hand remained on Hope's cheek. You've, your help is very important to me. Hope's hand went over his, and she closed her eyes. I know. I couldn't have done it without you. What else is new? They kissed. When Hope pulled away, she looked pleased, a sly smile on her lips. Are, you, are we still going to the store? Not, I'm not sure. They reached for each other again, but the phone gave a shrill ring. 
After the phone call this morning, Ethan turned the silent mode off. Oh well. My city needs me. Ethan bre uh, briefly pressed his lips to her forehead. Hope sighed and slapped his ass. If God exists, he really wants us to buy some zucchini. I'll go and get dressed. The call from the agents uh the call was from the agency. They needed more details and dates. Ethan went out into the hallway and tried to make it sound as plausible as he could. Yes, he understands that the deadline is very close. No, there are no serious hitches in the work. Yes, he will send everything on time. When he call when the call finally ended, Ethan's neck and face were flushed by this time, and he was a lousy liar after all. Ethan had to catch his breath. When he returned to the room, Hope was reaching for his laptop. What are you doing? Hope glanced at him over the shoulder. This time she looked surprised. Nothing special really, just wanted to print out some discount coupons. What about it? Ethan felt a bunch of file left a bunch of files and tabs open. They had nothing to do with the agency project and he didn't want Hope to see them. After all, she did know enough about his projects to serve as a sort of secretary. All about 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 all the projects except the one that Ethan shouldn't have taken because it wasn't paid for. Maybe his fears were irrational. Maybe Hope wouldn't blame him. But e Ethan felt ashamed and didn't want to take any chances after what happened this morning. I have lots of unsaved files in there. Some important information might get lost. Can I print those coupons myself? Ethan felt the heart heat raise again to his neck and cheeks. Hope stared at him for a few seconds. Ethan couldn't read the expression on her face, that, and that creeped him out. He was ready to hear the reproaches. He even agreed with them in his mind, but Hope simply walked away. Sure. I'll send them to your mail. <clears throat> they spent most of the way to the store in tense silence. A few times, Ethan asked something, just to make sure Hope was still talking to him. Hope was, though the answers were dry, and ne she never attempted to make a joke. It's not that bad, Ethan told himself. It's not that bad at all, if you repeat it again and again. You can buy a little time, but in the end, the anxiety will prevail. It always does. Ethan's mind quickly figured out the owner was trying to trick it and spat out the chewing gum. At that moment, Ethan got caught in an avalanche of thoughts he didn't want to deal with and couldn't in his current state. Something had to be done. To be said. But what? Maybe he should actually do something after all. Ethan imagined touching Hope's fingers, and he immediately saw her pulling the hand back, her eyes glistening. How she opens her mouth to ask the question Ethan had no answer to. They had to talk, one way or another. Ethan didn't know where to start without burying himself in even deeper. He'd been thinking about it the whole way, but it never came up. Ne but never came up with anything. The huge supermarket on the next block. A place they had long dubbed The Store, with bustling life despite the rather late hour. As soon as they entered the large glass doors, the tension began to come off on its own. The carts were scarce, but Ethan got them one in exchange for a coupon. Hope gave him a thumbs up and not bad, not bad at all expression on her face. Hope enthusiastically presented a colorful, utterly look, ludicrous rug, and Ethan immediately agreed they would have to buy it. They tried to find a pair for the oh, a mug, not rug. Ha, huh, English. They tried to find a pair for the mug, but a brooding supermarket uh, supermarket employee said it was the last one. Yeah, that sounds appropriate. They were a little disappointed, but at least that was something. Looking for the mug was the thing that finally did the trick. Now that they were huddled together looking for their favorite treats and arguing about which breakfast cereals were the best, that's how it was until they reached the meat department. I'll pick something out before it's all cleared. Hope nodded absently. She was stuck at one of the big fridges in the middle of the hall. Okay, I'll be waiting for you here. The meat shelves were half empty as usual at this hour. 
Ethan was hoping to find a steak or some minced meat. However, he soon forgot about both. <clears throat> there was a girl standing by one of the shelves. Ethan couldn't see her face, only her pale back under a white dress with thin straps and also her dishe disheveled black hair. Ethan's cheek was stung with cold as if his face was lying on the shelf in one of those refrigerator display case. Just between the pork ribs and a loin ribeye and a black Holystein foam tray. Is that her? Ethan took a few uncertain steps forward. Then he backed away, almost knocking over an old nice, uh, nice old lady. He couldn't even muster an apology grabbed the first thing that came to hand and turned around the nearest row of shelves. He tried not to run because it wouldn't have looked too stupid. Ethan explained himself as he reached the end of the row and peered around the corner. The girl was still picking out meat. Isn't that what you're doing now, stupid too? For sure it is, Ethan agreed with himself. The cold no longer burned his cheek and the girl... The girl seemed quite an ordinary, except she was dressed so lightly for the current weather, but that was still not considered a crime in many of the states. Ethan smiled to his own thoughts. Generally speaking, the girl was rather attractive, and her light clothing allowed one to fully appreciate it. Her thin waist passing into a seductive curve of her hips, and beneath the folds of white fa fabric one could make out one of her rounded buttocks. This is... E then... What, what? I was asking broccoli or Brussels sprouts. I was staring at ass. <laughs> Hope stood still with two colorful bags in her hands looking at Ethan questioningly. Man, that seat is special. <laughs> he blinked several times, squinting as if he had just stepped out into the bright light from a darkened room. When did he get back to Hope? Why was he holding a bottle of Thousand Islands dressing? I I don't know. He was a little dizzy. I wonder if that was... Very curious. I haven't played the 18-year-old version all the way through. I just uh, started it. So I don't know if there was an actual like sex scene. And it just clipped and it skipped. Sometimes, though, I usually could tell when it's about to happen. Are you alright? Yeah. Yeah, never mind. I'm sorry, I just lost in thought. Hope tried not to look in the direction Ethan had been focusing on for so long. She really tried, but sometimes trying isn't enough, no matter how much effort you put in. And at that very moment, the dark-haired dark girl's light dress was rolling away from the meat shelves. She must have made, she must have finally made her choice. I see. For a moment, Ethan thought both colorful plastic bags were about to slap him in the face. But Hope just smiled and tossed the bags in the cart. Er, Ethan heard them crunch loudly when they hit the bottom. Well, let's take both. Variety is the spice of life. That is a double into window. They hadn't bought any zucchini. God damn it, you guys came for that. I gotta lighten the mood with all the weird shit happening. That night, he had another dream about the white room. The walls were still trembling slightly in the cold light. Everything in the room, including the air, was oozing tension, anguishing and anticipation about what was about to happen. God, y'all motherfuckers know how to... You guys are writing sentences in certain ways just to fuck me up, aren't you? And something was really about to happen, no doubt about it. Ethan suddenly realized he was looking at the room from an odd angle. He seemed to be standing on something, but he couldn't feel anything under his feet. No support. He tried to look down, but only saw the shimmering air. He had no legs, nothing above the missing legs, as if he was not there. Or rather, he was, but... He was the shimmering air, the chipped ceiling and the walls that were still trembling. He was the red sofa standing a little away from center 
and a couple of unremarkable white walls, a door is on the opposite walls of the room that were not there the first time. And that should not have been there. Nothing could have been a, uh, nothing can be done about it now. The doors have appeared and there is nothing that can be done about it now. The light grew dim, now pulsating noticeably. It was still emanating from the room in its entirety, reflecting from the white walls, but most of all, from the twin bra on the wall behind the two doors that were not supposed to be there. For some reason, Ethan tried to catch the rhythm of the light with his breath, but he, yet he couldn't. I have, I'm curious if this is a scene I have to close out. I can't remember if it is or not. I think it might be. You guys won't be able to get to. Yep, I'm gonna just for safety's sake, I'm gonna put us some BRB, uh, so you guys can't see anything. There are two figures sitting on the sofa, and I will probably cut out anything that is really fucked up. One fair, the other dark. The dark one came into the room through one of the doors, but Ethan couldn't guess which one. The fair one was Hope. Well, it's fine for now. <clears throat> it should be fine. I don't I don't think there was a nudity scene in here. Hope, what are you doing here? You can't be here. You have to leave right now or something will happen. The pulse of the light became faster. The dark one moved towards Hope and tucked a blonde strand behind her ear. Everything was happening very slowly as if underwater. There was something odd about the dark one. Something about her was wrong, but Ethan couldn't guess what. She leaned towards Hope's ear and covered her mouth with her hand, and Hope leaned towards her and listened very carefully, as if they had a mutual secret amongst themselves. Something was about to happen. They both looked at Ethan, even though Ethan wasn't there, or rather he was nowhere, because no white room ever existed. Then one of them smiled. I'm going to put us in a safe spot, just to be safe. The Dark One's finger slid down Hope's chin. A soft, rounded line. They were no longer looking at Ethan, only at each other very closely, and were slowly inhaling the light. Oh, that's a scene. Interesting. I'm gonna cut this. They're kissing. It's two chicks kissing. Yep. That is... Oh, wow, that's creepy. The Dark One licked her lips and raised her tongue to make space for a long black snake as it got out of her mouth. The snake swayed, tasted the air with its own tongue, and reached out to Hope. Hope closed her eyes. Now the snake was stroking her tree cheek long and black over and over again in a spiral, always in a spiral. Hope reached for the band that covered her eyes, and the Dark Girl reached for her hand, and their fingers intertwined, and the light between their lips melted as it always happens at sunset. Yet there was no snake. It was just a black ribbon. A poisonous ribbon. Covered in scales. <clears throat> the pulse of the room became faster. One of the lamps became an eclipse. She has a number of faces. That's a clue. The bodies of two girls merged on the red sofa. And his own flesh was shaking and shrinking. shrinking. Okay. Le I think we're past the sex stuff. Ligaments, valves, bones, uh, vessels in places where they came very close to shabby red upholstery. Oh well. This I could probably show. This is fine. His heart rate beat faster. 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 And then something happened. Ethan woke up. His breath was bubbling in his throat. The ceiling above him was flaring with immeasurable darkness. And down below his stomach he felt a searing heat. The heat was so intense, Ethan had to sneak into the bathroom, and as his old man used to say, he had to squeeze it out, and not just once, but whopping two. After that, Ethan loomed over the sink and was looking at himself in a small rectangular mirror for quite a while. At some point, his lips started trembling. Ethan did not wait to see where this was going. He spat into the sink and let the, sink, uh, let the water in for a while, then he turned the lights off.
Had to be careful about that section. That section is always edgy. Ethan didn't want to, didn't want morning to come. He didn't want to wake up to see a hidden grudge in Hope's eyes, to listen to the awkward signs, and to seize every opportunity to say a word to break it. But morning did come, and Ethan was in for a surprise. Everything was fine, very much so. Hope got up early to make a superior breakfast, the kind Ethan was never able to cook, even though he, even when he really wanted to. She was talking to him. She was joking. She listed a, at least 10 places they should go when their schedules became more relaxed. The nightmare seemed to be over. Simply washed away down the drain with the rest of all the things excessed he used to have in his body. The image was so real, Ethan got completely relaxed. Let his guard down. Dazed by the cute nonsense. Waffles with cream and delicious Turkish coffee. Then Hope asked a question. Do you think a darker hair color would suit me? The coffee suddenly turned solid and stuck in his throat. Ethan felt as if it wasn't coffee at all, but finely ground glass. He coughed. <clears throat> what? Hope put her elbows on the table and sipped from her cup as if nothing had happened. I was thinking of I was thinking about becoming a brunette What do you say, huh? I don't know I'm fine with everything as it is As long as you like it, I guess Tiny pieces of glass were still catching him From the inside Ethan tried to clear his throat But it didn't get much better But why were you thinking about it? Ethan struggled to speak. He felt as if he was following in, falling into a pit and the air was whistling in his ears. Well, one has to change from time to time. Variety is good, isn't that right? She took another sip. Besides, I find plenty of black hair all over the apartment. Oof, or dark hair all over the apartment. Uh oh. Not very long, you know, but not too short either. About this length. Even before Hope tapped her neck with the edge of her hand, Ethan knew where the hand would stop. And so I thought. Oh. Japanese is weird. And so I thought, if I go brunette, I can believe those hairs are mine. Hope's, lip, Hope's lips stretched and the corners of her mouth turned up, but she wasn't smiling. This isn't happening. This just can't be happening. He must still be asleep. This is a dream, just a shitty dream and it'll end. Now, Ethan desperately wanted morning to come, but morning just couldn't come for the second time in a day. Hope leaned back in her chair and looked at him, with her head on one side, a fake smile mothering her lips. Something had to be done about it. All of it. Right at this moment. I can lie or I could tell the truth. Oh boy. I could keep lying or I could come up with a truth. I, I don't remember if this changes anything. I'm going to try... Dude, do I keep lying? Do I keep hiding the fact shit keeps happening? Oh, I'm so... I don't know which one to go with. I'm going to lie. Oh, the hairs. That's what you're talking about. I mean, I don't mind, but... You sure you want to change the color just because of a delivery guy? A delivery guy? Yes. I sometimes order food. I had a lot of dark hair delivery guys lately. Fascinating. <clears throat> what are all those delivery guys doing in our bathtub? I, I don't know. I, I don't know, Hope. Maybe I got distracted. A couple of times, maybe. You know, if I get a call from an agency, I switch immediately. Hope listened to the explanation with an unreadable expression. At least that ghastly smile was gone. I'm getting murdered. Ethan felt a 
bit better. Maybe the courier was prowling around the apartment while I was distracted. God, I, why didn't I think of that? Maybe that's why my stuff keeps disappearing. Who knows? Her smi She smiled bitterly. At least we found out it wasn't a cat, huh? Oh, fuck. He f Ethan felt like all the skin above the collar filled with heat and began to throb. Membranes. Valves. White, whitish films. Yellow bones. Innards shiny just like fairy jelly. Pulsing, contracting, trembling. Ethan closed his eyes involuntarily as if he would squeeze out a vision of them. Ethan, are you okay? You look bad. At least there was no mockery in Hope's voice. Yes. No. Ethan leaned on the table and rubbed his face with his hands, stretching the skin. And even vessels in places where they got very close to the worn red upholstery. He clenched his teeth and slapped his cheeks. The vision finally disappeared. No, everything's not okay. Not okay at all. I mean, I'm sorry, Hope. I don't know what to do about it. And that was true. Is there anything you want to tell me? Ethan shook his head. If I knew what I wanted to say, I would have said it already. I should have called the police and let them sort it out. It's their job, after all. I'm tired of all this. Uh, Hope sighed. I'm tired too, Ethan. And it's not even the end yet. What? It's not the end of the month. <clears throat> Perhaps I should start sorting things out now. Otherwise, there'll be no bonuses for me when the paycheck arrives. Hope got up slowly, as if hesitantly. Alright, I have to go. I'll be back late. See you tonight. Hope waved her hand weakly. When the door shut behind Hope, Ethan stood still for some time, listening to the high-pitched tinnitus and thinking of nothing, his head too, either too light or too heavy for his body. Then he felt the small hairs on the, his neck standing up. Someone was looking at the back of his head. Ethan turned around slowly. I'm calling the police. Ethan spoke each word loud and clear. It was a decent plan. An actual decent, an actually decent one. And it certainly wasn't funny in any way. And yet the girl sitting on the windowsill was silently laughing, covering white teeth with her hands. I know for a fact this has a scene, so you guys are going to have to not be able to see it. The girl from the supermarket. The girl from the dream. She was still wearing a light white dress, even though in the morning the temperature dropped to 53 degrees Fahrenheit and it was going to rain. One of the straps fell down to the side, but the girl was in no hurry to pick it back up. She swung her cross legs a little, looking at Ethan from under her brow, with the smile of a child who had a hilarious mischief in mind. Did I say something funny? The girl quickly raised her eyes and shrugged slightly, still holding back the smile. Just before she just before she did not make a sound just as before she did not make a sound. I think for now it's safe, actually. I think there's a certain point I'll have to like close out. Ethan assumed she could be mute, but decided to make one last attempt. <clears throat> I, like I said, it should be stream safe, so I actually shouldn't have to like cut anything out. Just one question, and then he calls the cop. Who are you? How did you get in here? Who are you? <laughs> the girl's eyes became round, and her face turned into a surprised grimace. Overly, overly surprised. Ethan immediately remembered the time when he and Hope came across a couple of street mimes. She poked her finger into her chest, which made her t Oh, okay. <laughs> Me? 
I am what you're looking for. She spoke slowly, stretching out her vows with some kind of delight. A moment later, the girl reached for something behind her back, quickly pulled it to her lips and took a sip. Ethan's throat became tight with blood that immediately rushed to his head. Where did you get this? The girl traced Ethan's gesture with a genuinely surprised look, and the next moment she parted her lips, or fingers. Oh. Hope's huge, colorful cup, the one they just got from the sore, tinkled hurtfully as it st struck the floor and then shattered to pieces. Just like that, there was a brief moment when the cup was lying peacefully on the floor. Ethan got enough time to hope it would endure the fall. And then the fragments burst everywhere at once as the furious white light broke out from the inside. But no, that was milk. Just some milk. You shouldn't have spooked me, you know. <clears throat> Now look what you've done. The poor cup is... Oh, wow, you keep talking. <laughs> now look what you've done. The poor cup is so, so broken. So many eeny, meeny, tiny pieces. There's no way to mend it all. Ethan was suffocating. What the hell are you doing here? What the hell do you want? What do you want from me? The girl bit her lip and twisted a fallen strap, uh, shoulder strap between the fingers. The top of her, the dress slid even lower. Do you want me to leave? But I may run into hope. Right at the door, Ethan. She forgot her. <clears throat> she forgot her pass and will be here any minute. What will the poor girl think? Alright, this is definitely gonna... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just in case. The girl looked over her shoulder and her face instantly lit up. Uh-oh. It's her. Here she is. Hope is simply amazing. Accurate to the minute. Hello. Hello. The girl turned over on her stomach, leaning on the sill and waved vigorously to someone invisible. Her dress completely slid down. That bitch, Ethan, would let... Mm. Drag her from the rando. Don't come any closer. This can end in two ways. I... I'm not... Ooh. I'm not touching her. There's no way I'm touching her. That'd be a very bad idea. Ethan couldn't see it, but he knew. He felt that Hope was really standing down there, and she was looking at the window. Of course, although she couldn't see much anymore, as a blurry veil covered her eyes. The girl slowly turned around and stared at him with her eyes wide open without blinking. I'm making sure I'm past this part. Her shoulders shook as if she was going to cry, but she was laughing. At first, it was a couple stiffle laughs. I think we're fine, actually. We might be fine. Maybe. We'll see. <clears throat> At first, it was a couple of stiffled laughs. Then it became laughter of someone who just heard a great joke and then gradually turned into wild, barking screams. He has to stop it. Right now. Ethan wanted to rush to the window, but just took one step and froze in place. The girl must be out of her mind. She's stoned or worse. Why that reference? She might have a syringe. She didn't want he didn't want any more problems. He only wants this thing removed from his windowsill, welded in a steel box, and dump it somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic. He still had his phone in hand. Oh fuck. <clears throat> nine 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 one one, what is the uh, address, uh, address of your emergency? The bitch shrank, hunched, and kept cackling like a pack of coyotes, yelping on a moonlit light night. She was writhing with laughter, and the pale rags of dried, flappy skin were shaking in the rhythm of her movements, her dress looking like a death shroud. 
He suddenly thought she was much older than he thought at first. What's going on? Ethan looked at her for the last time, a mixture of hate and disgust in his eyes, and turned away, running his hand through his hair. There's a stranger in my apartment, a woman, most likely on drugs or just insane. Can you see her right now? Ethan could only see the wall in front of him, but he heard a deafening howl. It was echoing throughout his skull, beating into his temporal bones like a desperate bird. Ethan clenched his teeth. Yes. Does she have a weapon? Maybe. She's threatened me. Can you leave the apartment? No. This scum can escape and I don't want her, uh, want her to get... Ethan hesitated. I can't hear you, sir. What is happening? <clears throat> Speak up. I can't hear you. What is happening? The terrifying laughter kept echoing in Ethan's ears. There was no one behind him. Oh, right. That is the spookiest part of that game. Jesus. That is terrifying. He approached the window slowly as if it was happening in a dream. My mic not set properly. There we go. The shards of Hope's cup crunched under his feet. Just like before, the window was closed. Ethan opened it and carefully looked down. He did not see the body. Too good to be true, but he had to check. Only the gray pavement, which gradually turned black as it actually started raining. Ethan looked across the street just in time to notice the familiar cream-colored coat disappearing behind the corner of the nearby house. Hope! Hope! He screamed so loud, something snapped in his throat, but she didn't hear him. Or maybe she didn't want to hear. Ethan called her at least a hundred times. Hope didn't answer. Ethan hoped he could, uh, Ethan thought he could come to her office, but it eventually decided would only, it would only make things worse. The police were in his apartment 23 minutes and 40, sec 40 seconds later. They didn't find any signs of forced entry, and the call recorded, as Ethan found out later, had nothing that resembled laughter or howling. No extraneous sounds, as the officer said. Hope turn, returned sometime between late at night and early in the morning. The skin on her cheekbones was taut and almost transparent, and there was there were deep shadows under her, her eyes as if she didn't sleep in a long time. She smelled of strong alcohol. Ethan went out of the dark room to her. He didn't sleep and didn't turn on the light either. The things that lurked in the dark, real or imagined, did, imagined no longer frightened him. He even wished that something he had been dreading from the past month. <clears throat> he finally could name the feeling he had would come out of the greasy blackness of the shadows and snap his neck. But everything in the apartment was mockingly calm, except for Ethan himself. Hope? Hope stared at him with silent sw and silence swaying a little. Instead of pupil, she had dark holes. I've been thinking a lot about what I would say to you if you came back. What I can say, Hope's face showed no emotion. It seemed like she didn't even blink. Anyway, I realized that I can only tell the truth no matter how crazy it sounds. If I tried to cheat, it only gets worse, right? Ethan gave a short, nervous laugh. Anyway, Ethan had plenty of time to think about what he was going to say, but he still didn't know where to start. Some time ago, I don't remember exactly, I started seeing a girl. Oh, he's lying again. Or, oh wait, is, who is she, Ethan? I don't know. Is it Sophie? Who? Sophie Wolf? Your students from the online course on... Hope made a vague gesture with her hand. Movies from the late Victorian era. Ethan didn't know why he said that, but Hope obediently repeated it in a flat voice. I remember you were really impressed with her. You always liked smart girls. And this one was also beautiful. 
Hope this isn't this isn't what you think. Think? Who says I think? Thinking is too painful. Wait, hold on. Ethan disappeared into the room and came in back in a few minutes later. The darkness of the hallway was diluted by the light of the screen. Hope covered her eyes with her hand, either from the brightness of the screen itself or because she didn't want to see whatever there was. What is this at all? What is it all about? Here, look. It's Sophie Wolf. On the screen, in fact, was the profile of Sophie Wolf, his student. On the photo, Sophie was squinting, either from the bright sun or because her curly red hair was getting in her eyes. A small brown haired girl snuggled up to her with a shy smile. They're a nice couple. If I remember right, they had a wedding this year. Then who is? I don't know. And honestly, I don't care. I just want her out of my life. But this bitch follows me. Where she used to well, she used to follow. But now I don't think I don't think I'll ever see her again. Is it good or bad? Hope. Please, if you want to leave, I'll understand. But if, if you're willing to give me a chance, I'll promise I'll do my best to mend it all. He couldn't really promise, but he was too eager for the nightmare, real or imaginary, to finally end. No more weird stories. Please, Hope. I don't need anyone but you. If I can get... He couldn't finish, the, uh, he couldn't finish because Hope kissed him. Her bag hit the floor with a thud. The rest of the night actually went fine. Well, even more than that, except for the fact they were too busy to get any sleep. Oh, fuck. Jesus, that scared me. At least anything was going to be okay until the moment when, instead of Hope's face, just for the moment, Ethan saw... He couldn't tell her. He mumbled something about not feeling well and collapsed in his back, panting. He closed his eyes so that Hope couldn't accidentally catch a glimpse of what he saw. Nothing happened. It wasn't real. It was fine. It's fine. She understood. And understands, Hope said. <clears throat> oh, something just changed. Oh, that's new. Hold on. It's been a while since something changed. The gel tur jelly turned really bad. I got a new, uh, I got a new thingamajig. Is that maintenance, I'm assuming? Oh, interesting. It was that clip. Nice. Sometimes every now and then I still get a I get one of the good ones. I'm still missing a bunch. Oh, this is the adults only page. I've got the Huh. So there's like three more scenes at the very least. The concave muzzles of Persian cat stared back at him. All that was required of Ethan. He had to call the cattery. A simple task, but Ethan hesitated. It was hard for him to get used to the idea of one of those pop-eyed creatures walking around their apartment. During the day, it will nap where it pleases and at night sneak into the kitchen to play with the shadows that move by themselves. And its eyes will turn into two saucers of black and green nectar. Uh, nacre- Ooh, I can't say that word. If the light reaches them. Ancient people believed the cats could walk between worlds and see spirits. Looking at Persians, Ethan ha hardly believed they could even breathe on their own. And yet, in this and this Ethan Harrison from the 21st century agreed with the ancient people. There was something sinister about them. In any case, you should call the cattery for Hope's sake, for the sake of them both, since he had made the decision. Ethan had already picked up the phone and was about to proceed with the plan when he heard the key turn in the entrance. Something about that wound him up. It was barely 5 o'clock in the evening, which was, in any way, very early for Hope to be back. If anything, if everything was fine, that's it. <clears throat> Ethan closed his laptop and went out into the hallway. For a long time, he couldn't say a single word, and when he could speak, again, he only managed one question. What have you done? Hope smiled for the first time in the four and a half or even five years they'd been a couple. Ethan was glad. Oh, for the first time. In fact, there was nothing surprising about it, as with the new haircut and the new hair color, Hope looked unbelievably, insanely similar to the creature at the window. Hope's lips turned white, trembling. This didn't help, did it? Any of it? You can't love me even now, right? 
What are you talking about? Isn't it obvious? I see how you look at me. You're disgusted. You try your best to touch me as little as possible. And no matter what I do, no matter what I try, it doesn't help. <clears throat> Admit it, you never loved her. You didn't, right, Ethan? She was convenient, and that was about it. That's a phrase. Shit makes the flowers grow, bro. <laughs> this is why women scare me. Your flowers grew so much, didn't they, Ethan? Didn't they? Ethan never hit his wife. More than that, he would never hit a woman. But what, what spoke to him was neither his wife nor a woman. It was a nightmare incarnated that bared its long, sharp teeth and came to take away his right for a second time chance. Or so Ethan thought at the time. The punch turned out somewhat pathetic, but you have to have to take into account that his wife beating is not a fairground attraction. <laughs> when you hit your wife properly, a mark does not fly up to the highlight sign, a good one. Although this only indirectly related to er the early renaissance, Ethan had ex expertise in the matter since his old man's fist used to itch often. If there was something like that, he would know. However, any sign could light up the mo uh, at the moment. It would say something like, you're scum, Ethan. No! He kept repeating that even after Hope stormed out the door in tears. He is devolving. He's getting worse. We're almost done, actually, I think. We should be almost done to the, to the end. I actually... Ethan barely remembered the following days. The f uh, following few days. Something seemed to be happening. Some people called him. He himself got called... He himself called a lot. He called Hope. Hope wasn't answering the phone. He knew this would happen. Every time he dialed her number, he knew he'd he'll end up listening to the voicemail signal. It became something of a ritual. He would wake up. Sometimes it was light outside. Sometimes dark. But more often, it was something gray. He never could nor want to identify. Uh, because of the dawn, uh, of the dawn curtains. Ooh, am I having problems? He called Hope. Hope wouldn't answer the phone. <clears throat> he would go to the kitchen, turn on the water. He would watch the silvery, twisted stream break, break against the sink for a while. Eventually, he'd put a cup under the stream and fill it to the brim. Drink? Go to the bathroom, back to the couch. It's too bad to be true. All of this can't be real. Life can't crumble into pieces in an instant, just collapse inwards like a wooden block tower. Ethan couldn't remember the name of that game. Once, he and Hope went to see... He and Hope. It's too bad. All of this can't be real. He can't do anything about it. It came to be that he didn't do anything. No. He hit Hope. He hit her and a red blot spread across her cheek. It was too dark to see, but Ethan knew how it goes. How could he do that? What happens now? What can happen now? These thoughts were like a bunch of needles he tried to swallow over and over again. Sometimes he managed to briefly forget about them. What would happen when he woke up in the gray timelessness, look at the dirt white ceiling, and didn't remember who that, uh, remember who that Ethan Harrison was? But the pain would always come back. He had a bunch of needles in his throat, and no matter how much water he drank, he couldn't get rid of it. Hope's father shook him up a bit, not in a sense he couldn't have done anything about, uh, done it, uh, could have, could have done it. Grabbing a hold of him, lifting off the ground. Hope's father was a tough man, and despite his age, he could hit Ethan hard. Ethan was afraid of it, and not at the same, and at the same time, he wanted it to happen. That would have made everything easier, maybe even fixed it all. 
Ethan was going over it in his head as he stared at the phone screen displaying a familiar number. He was awfully scared, yet he answered. It turned out Hope had asked her father to pack up for her. Mr. Mirale's voice was flat, maybe even a bit uncertain, and worst of all, he wasn't angry. This plunged Ethan into despair. He couldn't get his redemption like this. However, the young uh, upcoming visit forced Ethan to gain his senses. It shoved him back into reality like a stream of people pushing one onto the, uh, pushing one into into a crowded su uh, subway train. He tidied up the place a bit. He shaved. He figured out what to say. Several times he rehearsed his speech in front of the mirror. And just before Mr. Merrilies arrived, Ethan left the keys with the neighbors. Simply put, he fled. Of course he warned Mr. Merrilies beforehand with a message because he didn't have the heart to call. Ethan went in <clears throat> uh, Merrilies to pick up what he had to and get out as soon as possible. Merrilies wasn't going to help. That's for sure. He wanted to go. He was going to help, which meant he simply got between Ethan and his wife. Ethan was angry with Mr. Miley's, like he was going to, was the source of all the trouble. Anger was boiling up inside of him, mixing with cheap coffee and turning into a acidic acid. There was nothing rational about this feeling. Ethan had plenty of time to think about it, to weigh it, to examine it under a magnifying glass. He was sitting in a small cafe on the corner of the street until the streets got dark. He would have stayed there even longer if a waiter hadn't come to his table to tell him the place was closing. Ethan nodded absently and asked for a moment to use the bathroom. Again, there was nothing rational about being angry with Mr. Myerless, or Myerlees, and to be honest, it was pathetic. It was like, just like hitting your wife and then running away not to face her father. You're scum, Ethan. Worthless scum. Ethan turned off the tab and stared in his reflection in a large mirror. A few drop it, drops of water trembled on the tip of his nose and chin. Now that felt, that was a proper punch. Waiter, sorry, I, sir, I'm sorry, but you, but we, sir, are you okay? You have blood oozed from his split lip. Ethan wiped it with the back of his hand. Yes, yes, I'm fine. Sorry, I didn't mean to keep you. Ethan smiled. The fresh wound got swollen, swollen with blood again. A red blot spread across his face, face just as it should. He's losing his mind, people. Ethan didn't lie to the waiter. He really was fine. Maybe not in the same manner as before, but the gears in his head were starting to move again. When he got home, uh, Mr. Myerlees had already left. Turned out he didn't even take the keys from the neighbors. At first, Ethan assumed... He, can't, he could cancel the uh, visit, but as soon as he opened the door, his doubts disappeared. A strong, unfamiliar scent was filling the hallway. It could be his cologne, or maybe the smell of the apartment itself with Hope's presence faded away. <clears throat> he must have taken his daughter's keys. Somehow the possibility never crossed Ethan's mind before. He drew the air in through his nostrils and felt a sh and suddenly felt, a sharp and, uh, sh felt as sharp and clear as in the dream he had had days ago. Something was going to happen. Ethan looked around the empty, dark room and reached for the phone. It was to perform the ritual, or he was hoping something would go different this time. Short beeps. Ethan thought it was safe to say something was already happening. He only had to figure what and where. Something had changed in the picture. And it's not and it's not that Hope's favorite blouse is missing from the closet. If you found the difference, you win. If you find the difference, you'll know where the gears are taking you. The hallway. Hot bellied bowls bows in the dresser, full of giverish and dust. The kitchen. An uneven row of glass jars on a shelf. An empty coffee maker bearing dry blackness at the bottom. Spoons, forks, and knives, some of them really sharp. The bathroom. A mirror on the wall and in the reflection the closed door is open. No, not here. What about... Ethan licked his split lip. Yes, that's it. 
He has to check his email now. Ethan was looking carefully. It seemed like a lot of time had passed. His mailbox was full of various emails, but Ethan barely glanced at the names. He was looking for something special, and it was a, uh, and it was special about said. Letters from the agency were gradually becoming more and more concerned. At some point, concern turned into cold and aggressive. E Ethan idly skimmed through the note of contract termination. <clears throat> not, not that he was looking for. He started with the oldest emails and scanned the list all the way down, uh, all the way to the top. Nothing. Maybe he was looking in the wrong place. Maybe there's just nothing to look for. No, something is happening. He only had to figure what and where. Ethan got so close to the accurate answers, answer to those questions that the light of a new knowledge could have burnt out his eyes. At the top of the list was an untitled letter. Maybe Ethan missed it the first time, or maybe it wasn't there before. The sender was the same writer Ethan had volunteered to help, completely free of charge. Ethan's lungs turned into a deflated pool ball. He clicked the name on the letter without a name. Of course, the letter actually had a name. Mail clients clearly added untitled to the empty line, just in case you were losing it when you typed your email because something got out of that open door <clears throat> in the bathroom mirror. The poor guy begged Ethan to come. The mail said he couldn't sleep. He was scared, exhausted, and didn't know who else to ask. Something would get him very soon, and he, wouldn't, he, he won't figure anything out if he didn't figure anything out. He didn't know if it was related to the work he was doing. He didn't know how to drive away what had settled in his house. He only knew that something enormously hungry was looking at him from the darkness. You know what I mean, right? Ethan knew. By the time he finished reading the letter, Ethan already knew what he should do. Don't interfere. Answer the call. Ooh. <clears throat> answer the call. I'm going to answer it. He must. Something that settled in his house. His skin got covered in cold goosebumps. He could feel the eyes again, focused on a single point in the back of his head. Something was watching him. He tried to forget, to repress, to convince himself that nothing was happening, but something was looking at him, and it wasn't a matter of belief. The silence in his ears was a thin, tinkling note. It was watching. It was watching. Ethan jumped at his, on his feet, frantically looking around. A short, desperate cry escaped from his chest, and his eyes, with a bulging mess of burst cala calibres, cala calibres, opened wide. Uh, I can't say that word. There's nothing behind him, nothing but the black void of the room, but he couldn't trust it. Ethan knew he wasn't alone. God almighty, he wasn't alone. Ethan wiped his mouth. A, li a, red lo a long red smear appeared on his sleeve and ruffled his hair. The skin on the back of his ne neck was scalding cold. Ethan was afraid, but what was he afraid of? He tried to think coherently, to crumble his formless, unfathomable terror into a single image, but couldn't. He was afraid of oops, he was afraid of shadows, of an, of the unfamiliar smell of the apartment, of those thoughts that fluttered in his head like trapped moths. He was afraid of what he might sound out loud if he tried to speak to the dark emptiness of the room. Ethan suddenly saw the white dress hem swaying in the si still wax-like air, the rippling flesh of the membrane, the curtains at the open window, the death shroud. He remembered the terrible ghost and what she, what he, what he had to do. Ethan was suffocating. He sank to the floor. He was afraid of the white-dressed wraith. Yes, but the fear was deeper, bigger, and the source of it was elsewhere. It was not, this was not the cause, but one of the effects. The dark war <clears throat> room swayed before his eyes. Oh, I gotta grab water. <clears throat> it's intelligence alive. I'm trying to get past this. Ethan could smell its foul breath. He has to go. He has to ha find the house from the letter. Maybe then he'll find the answers, too. Maybe the two of them will figure out a way to escape. When Ethan crossed the threshold of his apartment, the hardest thing was not to run. He found the route right address with no trouble at all. The roads in this part of the suburb formed a, single, a simple clear scheme, so he didn't need any help. 
Still, Ethan desperately wanted to pull up in the front of a little uh, wanted to pull up in the fr front of a little house with the lights still on. Run up to the porch, knock on the door, and ask. Just ask. Ask anything. Ethan swallowed the dry with a swallowed with dry throat and kept driving. <clears throat> house number eight was hidden behind the trees, cut off from its neighbors by a wide lawn. Hell, you can't call this a lawn anymore. The grass crept into the cracks in the driveway and had taken root there in thick tufts. Among the weeds on the lawn, the wild, wild mint stirred its leaves drowsily, just as, a, as if an enormous hand tore out a patch from one of the fields Ethan was driving by on his way here and left it in the middle of the dry, uh, sleepy street as a prank. The night outside, Ethan's car was fresh and cool. This and the ride itself clearly cleared his head a bit, but now he was sinking back into sticky uneasiness. As he got out of the car, he slammed the door loudly so that the house would know he wasn't scared, but of course he was. He was scared as hell and still didn't know what he was afraid of. Ethan went to the porch and stood at the steps for a moment, looking at the front door. Then he walked around the house. There were no lights in any of the windows. Now I'll go back to my car and get out of here. But Ethan didn't do anything like that. Instead, he went up to the porch and, after a moment's thought, put aside the flower pot letter, uh, the flower pot the letter mentioned. He just checked things up. So that's it. The spare key was in place. He did. He won't go inside. It's just a small check. The key turned in the lock. It all went incredibly slow, as if Ethan was terrified of what he was, and doing, and what he was just. A burst of sharp pain burned the back of his head. The door, the key, and the hand that held it faded into a crimson black nothingness. Ethan was seeing a terrible dream. He was back in the white room with Hope. Hope sat in the faded red sofa, her hands clasped in her lap. Her eyes were staring into nothing. Ethan, hope, Ethan thought Hope wasn't seeing him again, but she was. Hope looked at him with her blue eyes, and in reeling horror, Ethan realized how much pain there was in them. <clears throat> she, had the, she had the key, Ethan. All this time, she had the key. She, had, she has all the keys. Who, Ethan wanted to ask, but didn't have time. Because hope wasn't there anymore. Only her head kept lying on the sofa, severed, oozing from the blo uh, oozing blood from the stump of her neck. Suddenly, the head moved. Ethan tried to scream, and he couldn't, as he, as if as he had no mouth. All he could do was watch, watch, watch. Hope's terrible severed head slowly turning towards him, looking at him, looking for him with dry, glassy eyes. Watch the black snakes moving in her hair and the mess of yellow-red entrails spilling out of the ripped, gutted sofa. Ethan tried to scream. Again, the abhorred vision faded. The, but the eyes remained. Hope's empty, lifeless eyes. Though the tight, through the tight, throbbing pain, Ethan didn't realize right away that he was actually seeing them. Hope sat opposite of him, pale in the moonlight. Both of them were in the same room. Ethan reached for her with his all his being, but he couldn't move. He was well tied. Hope's hair was light and long again. Is that a Wig? The thought was out of place, almost ridiculous. Ethan, why did you do this? Why did you do all of this? He might have believed that she really needed an answer, if not for the, a lightly rolled gag in his mouth. Now I have to kill you. Oh, sh I have to. Do you understand? She sobbed. But first I have to confess something. I read your mail. 
After what happened at the window, I just couldn't help it. <clears throat> I found this address in one of the emails. Her address. Hope, please. It's not what you think. But all that came out of Ethan's throat was a grunt. Shh. Don't strain yourself. If you, ha you have a wound on your head, and if you strain yourself, you may lose consciousness. I haven't told you everything yet. It's important for me to share. Laura says it helps. I, I don't know. <clears throat> Does it help, Ethan? Another sob. I parked nearby and waited. Waited for so long. I knew you were coming sooner or later. I saw her come and go and you weren't there. I was beginning to doubt, but you did come. You are here. Hope smiled, yet her eyes remained blank. I'm so tired. You may hate me for it, but I have to confess. It's not an easy task for me, you know. I hate lying. I'm sick of myself, Ethan. Why does it have to end like this? Ethan didn't have an answer. My problem is, is that I can't lose. I never learned to. I tried, Ethan. <clears throat> I tried so hard, but this is stronger than me. You know, when I was a little girl, my dad took me to the pool. She's rambling. I couldn't swim, and he wanted us to go kayaking together. I had those I had those huge inflatable armbands with uh, tiny cute cub bear, bear cubs on them. Can you imagine? Again, that terrible glassy smile. And so the lesson ended, and still I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. But I couldn't let my daddy down. Why is she going on about this? So I kept floundering in the pool until my lips turned blue. The coach, ha the coach had to literally pull me out of the water. I think, I think I haven't changed since then. Not a bit. <clears throat> I have to be the number one, always. The best. One and only. I can't have it any other way. Do you follow me, Ethan? Jesus. There wasn't even a hint of hatred in the way she looked, the way she spoke, and that's what filled Ethan with mesmerizing, crippling dread. Hope loomed over him, the pipe in her hands, so close that Ethan could see the red scabs clearly, the rust scabs. I'm scared, Ethan. I'm terribly, awfully scared. She ran her hand gently over his cheek. I love you. You don't have to do this, Hope, Ethan would have said if only he could, but she had to. Hope shrieked as if she had to squash an ugly bug and brought the piped down on his skull with a crunch. Then once more, and more. She repeat this simple act until her husband's head turned into a nauseating yellow-red mass. Her father, who was a doctor, would have probably called it in, oh, homogenous because there was certainly there was quite a lot of fragment bones left in it, Jesus. No matter how hard Hope tried to pull a quick end to it, she just wasn't, an, she was just an ordinary girl. She did what she could, replacing lack of ability with effort.
And this is a bad ending. <laughs> that. Uh, I think we're almost near the end, actually. I think it's actually ending soon. <clears throat> oh, shit. Yeah, though. When she finished, Hope put the pipe down next to the body. She wanted to wipe the blood off and all of the rest, but that wouldn't be wise. The pipe was the murder weapon, after all. Then Hope turned on her phone, made all the necessary calls. She confessed to what she had done and all the details, yet she left some things out. In the era of sex scandal, she wanted her husband to be remembered as Ethan Harrison, who truly loved history. Not Ethan Harrison, who cheated on his poor wife. After all, she really did love him. Covering what was left of her husband with her cream-colored coat, Hope felt exhausted, but she still had to take care of herself. To her shame, that part of the plan Hope didn't think through. Suddenly, she remembered there was a window on the second floor. The thought was simple, clear, almost joyous, and didn't quite belong to her. Something in the house seemed to take pity on her and give her a clue. <clears throat> The window was open and there were a lot of trusty cables in the room upstairs, which was convenient as her body became terribly heavy as if made of stone and every little thing took a great effort. In the last moments before both her feet were in the air, Hope thought she might survive or suffer for a long time before it was all over, but it was over soon enough. And that is the bad ending. That is what I got the first time, ending five of six. But because I am going to call that a day for this one, because I want to move on to a different game, you guys won't get to see the other endings. But if you do enjoy it, uh, you guys get to, you can let me know and I'll actually play the other endings out and you guys get to see what it looks like. Uh, I'm going to uh, take a break, use the bathroom, do all this other stuff, get some food, and then when I come back, we'll do the next game. And I'll see you guys then.